morning, everyone. My name is John Sears. I am the Admin Services Coordinator for Vermont Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation. Today, we're going to be talking about SharePoint lists and essentials. As always, uh, feel free to share the YouTube link if you know people might want to watch this, but uh, I'm, I'm going to keep putting them on YouTube so everyone can see this work because this Office 365 stuff is uh, can be a lot to take in. And today, you know, ordinarily we were brushing the surface of these, right? This is essential, so it's kind of like just meant to give you a basic fundamental outline of the stuff that we're talking about. But today, I think more than most, we are just scratching the very surface most of surface most because we're talking about two giant topics in SharePoint and Microsoft lists with enormous potential. And we're just gonna kind of talk about the real basics. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, can everyone see it? Yes. All right, great, thank you. Um, all right, so let's hop into it. So first let's talk about uh, what you might want to do with SharePoint and lists. So you might want to look to engage with these tools. So document storage in a remote environment. That's really, really important. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute Lars. Um, document storage accessible from anywhere. Customizable sharing permissions. So one of the things that uh, can be really tricky is controlling who can see what, and we can really control that using SharePoint and lists. Uh, with SharePoint in particular, there are customizable pages, so you can build a kind of one-stop shop, a combination of links or um, content that you can access. Importantly, you can store documents with metadata so that you can easily manage things. So when we talk about how we move beyond using share drives, whether that's our internal Y drive or um, our own internal Microsoft OneDrives, it really has to be a SharePoint or list type solution that we utilize moving forward. Uh, custom lists can serve as databases for applications. So in lieu of needing, you might think that if I want a database, I have to engage with Agency of Digital Services in order to build the dash, you know, to build a data set, which takes months or even years to build out what you need, where if your needs are simple enough, you can do them with SharePoint lists. Um, if you're like, I like Teams, but I don't like SharePoint, um, they're basically the same thing. So um, Teams is really just a mask that's run over SharePoint. So if you're like, I wish I had a SharePoint site, but you do have a Teams site, you have access to a SharePoint site. So it's easy to get from Teams to SharePoint with just a click of a button. And when it comes to our lists, really, where they're really powerful is customizing views, filters, and sorts. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it, but if you're ever like, man, I've got too many people in my Excel sheet and I don't know who can see what views because we're constantly filtering and sorting and we're in here all together and it just creates a mess and I don't know who or what's going on, um, we can really move past that using SharePoint and lists. So let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna cover some basic features first on SharePoint and then tackling lists. We're going to talk about basically one advanced feature for each. Again, scratching the surface of the surface, uh, importing lists and editing views. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on an exercise where we're actually going to build a list together. And then we're going to talk about some best practices moving forward because this is really one of those things where um, it's up to you to assess a situation and figure out if SharePoint or lists is the right tool for the job. And ultimately, that's what I hope you take away from this training is you might not know how exactly to do everything you want to do, but you have a pretty good idea that uh, lists or SharePoint is the right solution to get you there. And then you can engage additional resources, whether that's reaching out to me or searching for what you need on the Internet. So first, let's talk about SharePoint basics. So um, 
This is a SharePoint page. So there are lots of different um, types of pages that you can create in SharePoint. This is just a basic one, and it's basically comprised of a bunch of different web parts that you can assemble in whatever manner you see fit. So in this particular example, um, this is a web part, which is actually an embedded list where uh, there's a basically there's two columns. There's a summary column and a photo column, but I just have one thing of summary that is dynamic text. You see how it's got like bold and it's got links in it. Um, and then it's got a photos thing. So that's one web part that is embedded in there. There's another one down here that is uh, a direct link to Microsoft Stream. So it's a link to the internal version of the Lean Learning series, which is available on Microsoft Stream. Um, and down here you can see this project status updates, which is actually feeding off of a bunch of subsites uh, to populate the stuff. And um, there's another web part here that is documents, so documents that are relating to this continuous improvement hub, which I built back when I was in DEC. And this is just to kind of show you the variety of things that you can put on here. You can build a SharePoint site. It's heavily customizable, so you can uh, publish little blog posts. You can bring in document libraries, photo libraries. It really is something that is as powerful as you make it. It could be as simple as a page with just a bunch of links that are convenient to you, or it could be as robust and varied as you want. So um, the more you experiment with building the pages, the more you begin to see how versatile and powerful the tool is. So how is that different than lists? So lists originally were part of SharePoint. They were a um, specific application within SharePoint, but they've since been broken out into their own application. And what that's really allowed them to do is work on lists specifically and enhance the functionality and capability of lists. Um, it works a little bit like Excel in that you can establish different columns, but you can establish different column types. Here's kind of an example of the column types that you can manage. So you can specify whether it's single or multiple lines of text, numbers, yes, no, checkboxes. Um, you can tie in person. So that actually links to the Azure system. So basically you can tie in an actual um, person's account to a single row. And that becomes really useful for Power Automate purposes. Um, date time choice. So like if you want to basically populate a drop down list of things that are allowed to be in a column, you can do that. And those can be either um, only choose one or multi select. You can build those into your SharePoint lists. You can add images, metadata. You can do lookups to other tables if you want to be able to find specific information. Um, and for each and every row in a SharePoint or in a list, you can actually upload documents too. And that becomes really powerful when we start talking about document management. Um, but essentially you build this list. You can either hit new to create a new record, basically like it's a, a database. You can also edit in grid view, which lets it function like a slightly wonky version of Excel, but has a lot of the same functionality of Excel. Um, so it can be really easy to work in. And where this really gets powerful is when we start talking about views. So views are basically ways of representing the core data in a given list. And what that means is you can present different views. Each one can have its own web link and it can all be tied to the exact same data, but you can present that data in a way that relates to different people. So for example, um, 
I've been working with Caroline on um, building up a uh, basically a table of a list of communications resources that are available to all of the agency of natural resources. Now, the agency of net or uh, sorry of, of FPR. Um, so that represents needs for lands, parks, and forests. So should we build three separate lists to manage that where she's got to figure out which list it goes into, upload the same document in three different lists if um, she needs to send those things to three different people? The short answer is no, she doesn't have to do that. She can put everything in a single list and then create different views to serve those different communities. So she can build one that if you put in the right metadata, filters things out so that the things that are relevant to forests are available to forests. Things that are relevant to parks are available to parks. And it really helps to cut down on the amount of wasted effort that goes into stuff. And these views are heavily customizable. So you can change how you view them so you can view them as calendars, lists, galleries, or boards. You can either make it internal or external views, so you can create your own internal views that are just for you, or you can create views that are available to other people. You can choose which columns to see and what position they want to be in. You can do filter, sorting, grouping. You can uh, comprise totals. You can apply different styles, or if you have folders, you can choose how you want to manage those. They're really, really heavily customizable to fit your specific purposes. And that's really where this stuff shines. So we've also talked about building a list that has a bunch of coding information for forest parks and recreation. Uh, the codes that forestry needs are almost 180 degrees from what parks needs, uh, but they can all live in the same list. As long as you put in the right uh, filtering and sorting mechanics, you can present two separate views and you wouldn't even know that they're the same list. You would just think, oh, there's, that's the forest list and that's the parks list, but it's all running off of the same information. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do with lists, so I'm going to go ahead and show you just a couple as we hop into our exercise. So here I am just on my forms page because you can be literally anywhere that's got these nine dots up in the corner. And I'm going to go ahead and grab them. And I'm going to go ahead and search for lists, which looks like this right here. So if you want to follow along at home, this is your chance. So go ahead and go up here, go under apps. You might have to hit all apps to find it. But I'm going to go ahead and click on lists. Yours is probably not going to look like this. I love lists and I do a lot of things with lists. So I've got a list, a lot of lists up here. Creating a new list is very, very simple. You just go up here and do new list and we're going to do that in a second. But first, I just want to show you um, some examples of some lists that I've built. So this ooh list is my out of office. So when my staff want to announce that they're going to be out of the office, they do a very simple Microsoft form, which uses Power Automate to push data to this list. This list has some very simple fields. It is uh, the name of the person requesting the time off, the start and end date of their leave, the reason, the submitted date, and the approval, which is working off an approval workflow. This is the list itself, but there are multiple views. So I have, an, I have a calendar-based view. This is the same data, the same list, but I can see when everybody has off with just opening this up, I can see that uh, Lisa is ending her leave soon and Leslie leaves on the 31st for her super adventure. And um, it's a really, really powerful different version of a list. Um, one area in list that I've had a lot of success with is onboarding. So I basically built an onboarding work list in lists. You can see it looks very different than that other list. But um, basically the work item, the description of it, the complete by, these are just uh, drop down fields for the list, whether it's complete or not, when it was completed by. This is an example of the person field, so who the mentor is for that particular task. 
any relevant links. So you can have links, you can attach files to these individual records, and it creates a great ongoing resource for staff. Where I've had a lot of success with these is um, building these as backend databases. So let's go ahead and take a look at the state lands invoice tracking. So this one's a bit more complicated, right? So I've got invoice numbers, invoice dates, project numbers, vendors, descriptions, invoice totals. We're tracking district, fiscal year. We can even track uh, documents on here. So if uh, people want to actually add invoices to these, they can. So it's really, really cool and really, really powerful. So let's go ahead and create a new list together. So we're right back here on the main list page. Right up at the top, it says new list. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It'll open up this pop up here. And we basically got a couple of options. So you can start with a blank list, which is just going to give you a generic flat space. That's what we're going to do today. But you don't have to start from nothing. Um, you can generate it from Excel. So if you're looking to transition from an existing Excel spreadsheet into this new system, because um, let's say you're sick and tired of someone messing with your filters and sorting, you want to be able to have a lot of people in here at the same time, you want to, um, we've had a lot of success creating lists as um, basically notification generation so basically you create a list you uh, set aside a bunch of dates for various uh, records on the list and then power automate will send people emails to alert them to certain things um you can you can really tap into the power of lists here um if you have an existing list that's really close you can do that basically this is our chance to figure out what those various columns are there are also some generic templates you can use the onboarding one that I used was basically an adaptation of this employee onboarding template. I would encourage you to experiment with some of these templates. Uh, issue trackers, onboarding, event itineraries, asset management, recruiting, travel, work progress. There's a ton of stuff on here um, that's worth taking a look at. We're just going to go ahead and create a blank list. So it's going to prompt you for a name for your list. So I'm going to go ahead and call this test. Uh, this list is for testing. You can customize the color and icon. So I'm going to go ahead and because it's a test, I'm going to get a little beaker and I'm going to go ahead and give it a color that I don't typically give to stuff. Um, I do have stuff loosely themed based on color. Um, there are enough customization options there really, and you can't delete a list. Uh, but that's a different thing. Um, so also lists can live in two, one of two places. They can either live in your own set of lists or they can live with a particular group. So you see here I have all of the different <laughs> groups that I have access to. Um, I could tie it to any one of those, but because this is just a test one, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pollute which lists course admin assistant team so you could choose whether or not to show it in site navigation so when we're building a sharepoint uh site for example and we want to engage a list this would be how you would associate it with that sharepoint site so i'm going to go ahead and create that and by default it's not going to give you a lot so title is basically the unique identifier it's the um the one field that it puts in there by default and adding columns is really, really simple. You just click add column and it's going to prompt you with the whole list of all of the various columns that you could create. And so we're going to go ahead and use one of my favorites, which is choice. And we're going to call it. Uh, what data type? Or, you know, we'll just call it type. And you can specify what the choices you want are and you can just go down here and select what they are. So you could say uh, type one, type two, type three. You can color code them so they're very visually distinct. Uh, you could add additional choices. You can add as many as you want. 
You can um, calculate values if you want. There are additional options here, so by default it will use a drop down menu, uh, but you can opt it for radio buttons. You can engage with multiple selections if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit yes. I am going to add another one for uh, hyperlink. So link to data, or we could just call it link. So this is gonna be a hyperlink. Now, if we want to go ahead and say, all right, that's what we're doing. We're just basically providing a link and we're going to say what the type of link is. Um, we can either add a new record by just hitting new and you'll see it creates basically a little mini form for us to do stuff to. And each of these records has a distinct link. So you can also engage with Power Automate or tools like that to bring people to a specific record that they can then update because it will just open up the form for them. And believe it or not, if you um, are building in a list with a bunch of different columns and you're like, well, I don't like how it's like one thing, then the next thing, then the next thing, you can actually customize the layout of the form for entering the data in your list. So uh, there's a lot of power and a lot of control. And you see here, even with the... Um, title, the type, the link, there's still a spot for adding attachments. So you can always, always, always add an attachment to this. So if we were going to build a um, a document storage site here, um, basically this would be our metadata, right? So types, URL, um, you know, maybe you would document what kind of retention policy you want to have on a given document. And you can start automating your retention policies if you're that ambitious. Um, but the future of document management is here. And um, just to be frank, um, that's mostly in theory. Uh, I don't know anyone that's actually put this into practice yet, but um, we're exploring the possibility right now. So. That's all it takes to create a really powerful list, and um, it ties in with Power Automate and stuff in some really cool ways, which we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, I just want to show off one more list before I forget, and let's see if I can find it, because like I said, I have a whole bunch of lists. Um, not seeing it right now. Um, but basically, I built an entire photo library in lists, and it's really, really cool and really, really useful. Um, I'll show off one more different uh, list. So this is an example of a town list. Um, we get submissions for licensed special use permits that have a town associated with them. What I'm doing is I'm using Power Automate to parse the town information and then I'm comparing it to this list which will then tell me who I have to send this email to because it's auto calculating it based on the district that I specify. So if I calc if I specify district 3, it will automatically know that that's Allison and um, then it will automatically send an email to Allison and Elise if it's in just if it's uh, if they put in Addison. So lists are really, really powerful, really, really useful. So let's go ahead and finish up with our uh, best practices. So when do you want to opt for using a list over just an Excel spreadsheet? So basically, if you are expecting more than two to three people playing around in that space on a regular ongoing basis, consider using a list because people can build their own custom views to see what they want to do. It isn't going, you aren't going to be in there messing around and have someone mess up what you're trying to do, right? Because you're adding your own records, you're adding your own views, and it's not conflicting with anything that anyone else is doing. If you're going to have a lot of people in a spreadsheet, get away from the spreadsheet, use the list. Um, lists and SharePoint integrate very, very well in Teams. 
you can actually create a tab in any given team specifically for a list or specifically for a SharePoint. And worst case scenario, you can always do the add website option and just include the web link to either the list or the SharePoint site, and it all integrates very well and very naturally. Um, the way that I've been using lists the most is to collect data and attachments from forms. So um, uh, one of my go-to avenues is create a Microsoft form, the data from that form, when it comes in, Power Automate takes that data and it pushes it directly into the list. And then I might run Power BI off of that list in order to generate some data. Uh, and I've actually got an example right here of our heavy cut data, which is being, we built a form to take in the data, the data flows into that SharePoint list, and then Power BI generates this really cool interactive database off of that SharePoint list. Um, and I would encourage you to avoid the temptation. It, it's really, really easy and straightforward to just create a SharePoint site that's just a bunch of links. Um, but if all you're going to do is list off a bunch of links, you might as well just be using lists. If you're going to use SharePoint, create a real SharePoint site. There are so many different asset types and um, tools available to customize those pages that you're really hurting yourself if you're not going to explore that and try some different ways of visualizing that data because one of the reasons people hate SharePoint is because nobody's customizing the SharePoint sites for the people that are using them. Basically, they're stopping at the initial stages of, uh, oh, it's online, it's good enough, instead of uh, building around the needs of the people that are accessing the sites. So um, play, explore, learn more, reach out to me, check out online resources. There's a ton of stuff out there to integrate those web parts and create a website that um, really fits your needs. And don't be afraid to leverage lists because there's a lot, a lot of stuff you can do with lists where you don't even need to touch SharePoint. Um, so if you're uncertain, you can always reach out to me. Um, it's it, There's a lot of nuance there. So uh, that's all I had to share today. Uh, we've got a minute or two for any questions, if anyone has any. Uh, Jenny. I know when you were talking about lists, you had said that um, you can set up all kinds of, of filtering for views and stuff like that. If you create um, a list from what's, let's say, in an Excel spreadsheet right now, can you give multiple people the ability to edit it? Um, is that a problem? Yeah, so it's very easy to share um, varying permissions. So you just hit the share button right here and you can specify who exactly can view and who exactly can edit. So you can set those specific permissions either with various links or by individual basis for who can do what. Um, you can have any number of views. Um, and if a view is made public, people can take those views and build their own customized views based over the top of it. Um, it's it's really, really versatile, and I don't think there's any sort of limitations on that. Does that answer your question? It does, because I've already thought of something that we could use lists for, so it does. Thank you very much. Yeah, and that's really what I wanted to get across today is like to get your mind spinning, get you thinking about what are the applications for this? How can we use it? Oh man, I'm so sick of that Excel spreadsheet where everyone's always messing with the stuff that I was looking at. Like it's this stuff's really, really cool and really, really versatile. Any any final questions as we're at nine o'clock? A few in the chat. Hey there. Uh, what's the story with Lookbook? I don't know what Lookbook is, Agnes. Uh, differences be between SharePoint collaboration versus SharePoint communication. Uh, Elizabeth, can you uh, elaborate? Uh, yeah, so when I was going to the, the different webinars for SharePoint, there they stated that there was uh, SharePoint communication pages and SharePoint collaboration pages. Um, and 
had different features and um, our program utilizes both. Um, our, our collaboration pages utilizes the web parts, the communication page does not. Um, I was just wondering if you knew more about that, if we should be looking more to utilize web parts on the communication page, um, just if you had any background on it. Um, well, I know for us in the state of Vermont, um, our SharePoint sites are not outward facing. So the opportunities for collaboration, collaboration are good, but the communication is really lacking. So um, beyond that context, I don't really have any really insights on those distinguishing characteristics. Um, which answers Jackie's question. Uh, basically, no, uh, the state of Vermont doesn't allow us to put this stuff out there for the public. Um, there are versions of SharePoint used by other organizations that they can make available to the public. And that's why I haven't really talked about those features because we can't, um, they won't let us. Uh, Agnes, I'll have to check out Lookbook. I'm not familiar with that, but I am always excited about the prospect of new stuff. Yeah, which I guess goes into my question. What's the story with like, there's the classic and the modern? What does that uh, mean? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> SharePoint has undergone a lot of changes over the last like five or six years. Um, it used, at least in the state of Vermont, we used to have these internal sites that were um, operating on a very specific platform. Uh, then they moved those from internals to externals, but they were still running on the old system. Uh, and now they're running on, sometimes they're running on the new one. Um, it kind of depends on what IT sets up, whether it's running on the old platform or the new platform. The new platform is really, really nice, and um, it's a lot easier to customize and format and a lot more intuitive than the old platform was. I don't know what governs which. Um, a lot of the ones that we've looked at today, well, I guess we haven't looked at a lot of SharePoint sites, but um, a lot of the ones that we're probably familiar with are on the old one not the new one but the new one's even easier those web parts come together a lot easier it's easy to set up a, a really easy blog if that's something that's your speed um and sharepoint could be a really cool way to, to share information with the public but unfortunately we don't um, have access to that functionality uh all right one last question from elizabeth uh customizing a new list move column order but go to enter data all right so um I think that has to do with customizing views. If you don't save your views, um, it won't matter how much you move the columns around. So you can alter the default views, but um, you just gotta make sure you save it. So um, you would wanna save view as, and you can overwrite your old one, or you can go ahead and create a new one. But see, I can move these columns around all day Sometimes it will save the views and sometimes it won't. So just make sure that it's saving that view. All right, unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you guys so much for coming out and asking a bunch of really great questions. Um, it looks like uh, Lookbook is a collection of templates you can use on SharePoint sites. Really cool. I'll have to look into that more. Templates for the modern experience. Uh, you should be able to use lists on either the old one or the new one. Awesome. But, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for your attendance today. Our next one of these uh, is just this one. Open, please. Our next one of these is on. Ooh, Teams. I bet you guys don't have any familiarity with Teams. If you think you know Teams, uh, come to that Teams training, and we'll see how well you really know Teams. All right, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys on 11.8. Have a great rest of your day.